Well, good morning. We're sorry we're a bit late this morning, but there was a technical hitch. And well, when there's a technical hitch, it kind of just holds you until it's sorted out. But I'm glad that you're joining us and I'm glad to be sharing this with you. And as you'll see from uh, the, the introductory photo, I'm going to be talking about volcanic marriages. <laughs> um, volcanic marriages. You, you might say, well, you, you know, that sure is the heading for my marriage. And you might be saying that with a sigh. Well, in the context of what I'm going to be sharing, I hope so. You see, I'm talking about a marriage, despite hardships, despite eruptions, fiery eruptions, um, you can have joy and you can have peace. Being a volcano of joy and peace and love when murder <laughs> seems to be the only solution is what we're heading for. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, listen, mate, you fell off the wrong bus. My marriage will never be like that. Well, let me disappoint you. Yes, it can. And that's what we're going to look at. It's absolutely possible. Now, when I felt prompted to share the series um, on, on marriage and what, what we deal with in marriage, uh, I, I said, well, Lord, what title do I give it? Because, <clears throat> you know, we can call it marriage bliss, working your way towards a better marriage, the joy, marriage, whatever. And as I was thinking of that, this heading just came to my mind and I thought it's so perfect. Volcanic marriages. Yes, there are fiery things that happen in our marriage, but our marriage can be a volcano spewing forth fiery joy and peace despite the issues we work through. And so I want to share these things with you over the next couple of weeks. I want you to know this is not a marriage seminar. I'm not laying down rules for marriage. I'm simply sharing practical experiences that Tish and I have found in um, over 32 years of counseling uh, married people and what we've gone through ourselves and what we've discovered. And so it's just a practical chat and talk. And even in the series, there'll be one or two days where I'll bring on board a couple of guests where we will sit and chat. And you can hear uh, from a few of us or the experiences we've had to help you. So first, first and the most important thing, let me burst that fairy tale bubble that says your spouse will fulfill all your needs and be the source of happiness to you. Not true. Are you going to say, but surely that is what should happen? Yes, but it's not true. You, you, you see, you cannot in a marriage depend on each other, on one another to meet all your needs. So what do you depend on then? You might be saying to me, well, you know, what do I need to do then? And this is what we're going to look at at this series. And I believe it's going to help you, encourage you, and get you to a position where you'll have joy uh, despite what's happening. And that joy will cause you as a couple to stick together like Bostic. And uh, you're going to endure things and walk through things because there's that deep inner joy in your own heart. Now, when as a married couple... And I'm sure every married couple listening can identify with this, <clears throat> that we run into trials, hardships, and children, having children, which changes everything. Um, you sometimes go through a desert experience, a dry experience. And unless you're prepared for that, well, everything in the marriage, the emotions, the love, and everything could die in that desert experience. And that is what we want to prevent. And that's what we're going to work on over the next few weeks on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I just want to tell you, a lot of people say, well, I had a lot of money and I could buy my wife a lot of things and take her traveling. And if I was successful, you know what? Let me tell you where you can be as successful as you like. You can have as much money as you like. I'm not saying everybody, this is generalizing. A lot of people, just not counseled over the years, might have a lot of money and can do a lot of things, but they are not happy. There's a lot of unhappiness and there's no joy. But that doesn't mean to say that those who don't have <laughs> are happy, because there are some who are happy, but there are others, because they don't have, are just as unhappy. 
And so it applies to us across the board what we want to share. What I'm saying is your partner, um, being your spouse, things, material things, wealth, money, or poverty, whatever it is, can't bring you the joy that you need in your marriage to carry you through. You are the one who need to have a deep, deep assurance, is the word I think I'd like to use, assurance of the joy that is in you to survive these things. Now, obviously, happiness and joy are not the same things, and I hope you know that. We often hear people say, and all the adverts uh, that we hear on the media and that, is, oh, you deserve to be happy. You should be happy. And um, many people then look to their marriage partner to have that happiness. However, if we look at the divorce rate just in our nation, never mind anywhere else, and if we see the amount of marriage counseling that is necessary to keep marriages going, we show a different picture. Now, as I said, over the years that Tish and I were married, which was 43 years, three months and four days, very blessed about that, um, we in our own marriage, going through issues, discovered something that kept us going and kept us together. But we also found that amongst a lot of counseling and seeing a lot of married people, there's one big problem. And the first problem is that we go into a marriage with expectations from our spouse. I wonder if you would say expectations. And as you say expectations, I wonder in your heart if you can really admit that you do have expectations of your spouse. So let's give that a little thought for a second. Number one, if you have expectations, does your spouse know about them? And are they realistic? <laughs> Could they really be applied in life practically to make you happy? The other thing is, are you aware of each other's expectations? Because it's not just the wife who has expectations, the husband has expectations, and sometimes the one isn't aware of the other one's expectations. And that we found out so many times where we sit in talking to a couple and they'll say, yo, the wife will say, yo, but he doesn't do this. And I will say, yo, but she should do this. And I'll say, hang on, hang on. What you're really saying is you've both got expectations of how the other one should be bringing happiness or make your life good and meet your needs. It's expectations. And then they sort of look, oh, well, we suppose so. No, no. Are they expectations? And then they admit yes. Well, let me tell you something about expectations. Number one, expectations are often very selfish and they often unattainable and they're the biggest cause of unhappiness in a marriage. Especially the expectation that your spouse is going to be the source of your happiness. Yes, you should be happy in your marriage. Don't get me wrong. But happiness depends on people and circumstances and can be very temporal. But joy, the joy I'm talking about, is very different. That joy comes from deep within you and doesn't depend on people, <clears throat> even your spouse, or circumstances. And the wonderful thing is that this joy will cause us to survive in the desert experiences, in the volcanic, fiery turmoil, and God will then be able to refine us, which he does in that, refine us, make us stronger in the process, and draw closer to him. But we need to discover this joy. Well, how are we going to discover this joy? How are we going to discover that our marriage doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be a plume of smoke and fire, of, of turmoil and fighting and anger and disappointment, but instead, our marriages can be a volcanic expression of joy and peace and love despite what we're going through. Even if the outside world looks at you and says, whoa, they're really in a mess, they, they're really at loggerheads. But somehow, we see there's a joy and a peace in them, and they keep pressing in. That is what I want to share with you. So, this morning, I'm just introducing the volcanic 
marriages to you. And um, I know it's going to bless you. I want to reiterate, it is not a marriage seminar. I'm not giving you six steps to anything. I just want to share practical ways and the ways God has given us to stay together, to enjoy each other, to have hope together, to work together, because you are depending on the joy in you to carry you through and give you and cause happiness and not one another. And I say again, yes, we should make one another happy, but our happiness can't depend on each other. And this is one I want to go through in the following weeks. So this morning, I'm just trying this out. Hope to whet your appetite. And um, I'd love you to walk through this. And if you wish to um, send questions to us, you're welcome to send questions to us, WhatsApp them or email them, and we'll see if we can handle them. And look forward to having a panel that I'll be sitting with chatting to you and you with us, hopefully, in, in the near future. But as I close this morning, I'm going to leave two scriptures with you. And I'd love you to meditate on these scriptures and ask the Lord just to minister to you and speak to you through these two scriptures. And the first scripture I want to share with you is Proverbs 5, 18. And Proverbs 5, 18 says, May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Wow. And may you rejoice in the wife of your How can you rejoice over the wife of your youth? What causes you to rejoice over the wife of your youth? And that we're going to be looking at. And then the other one is from Nehemiah 10. And the last part of Nehemiah verse 10, where Nehemiah is reading the scriptures to everybody and they, they weep him before the Lord and everything. And he says, do not grieve. And these are words we often quote. But I pray you'll meditate on them and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of them. And we will be discussing them. He says, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord. Not your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And uh, I, I believe that is so true. Uh, it doesn't just happen. It's a journey. We've got to seek it. Um, we've got to believe God for it. We've got to have faith for it. Um, but I believe like the volcano... <laughs> Our relationships and our marriage should be, despite the fire, despite the turmoil, we should be a volcano of joy. And through that joy, happiness will come and you'll see your needs will be put in, um, can I say, priority. And um, you, you will be able to see them with a better eye and you will understand how you can work together to have a good volcanic marriage. <laughs> So I trust you're going to look, um, just peruse through these scriptures. Ask the Lord to help you. And you know, when you see your spouse, when you look at your husband, you look at your wife, don't look at them as meeting your need. Look at them as someone who God, God has given you to create a life in oneness and togetherness, which is so powerful. And we'll be touching on that as well. So look at each other as a gift from God. God has given you a gift of that woman um, you have children together, you, you're going to live together, you're going to work together for the good of the kingdom. And he said, the two of you will become one, and there's power in that oneness. And I want to help you with this as much as I can. I don't know it all. I just want to share practically what we've experienced over the years and trust it will bless you. So be ready for a good volcanic marriage as you press in and join in with us and I pray that your marriage shall be blessed, your marriage shall prosper, and you will see each other as a gift from God to work together, be together, and construct something beautiful and wonderful for yourselves and for His kingdom. So may your marriage be blessed, and may you have a wonderful day today, and we'll be joining again on Thursday about our volcanic marriage. Take care, guard your heart, and God bless you.